So students, we're going to do an exercise practicing how to develop our sense of balance and white space. So in Photoshop, please create a single page design that includes a headline, subheadline, image, and placeholder paragraph text. So let's start by making our 8.5 by 11 inch file. File new, blank file. You don't have to name it yet. 8.5 by 11, please make it 300 pixels per inch. The background might as well make it white. So you've got your document there. You need to create a headline, a subheadline, and some paragraph text, two columns of it actually. So use the, in the text tool, drag out a box for yourself. You can type what you'll think uh, you'll want for the headline of that would go along with this image. So you might say something like clay. Now you'll see that my text isn't showing up because it's white. So let's maybe do a gray. Increase the size of that. And you can resize that text box so it's close to the text itself. Press the green check mark to confirm. This can be resized later, so we're not too concerned about how big this is at the moment. Might be easy to get this picture in first. If you click on this picture on the post, right click on that and save the image, you can get that onto your desktop. Or you can right click on it and say copy image. And back in Photoshop, you can paste it. Resize it so that it fits within the space. And you can rotate it too by hovering near a corner, dragging as you click, and hold shift to lock it into stable angles. Green check mark to commit. Should be resized further. Doesn't matter at the moment. We can move it around and change its size again. So now that we've got that image in there, we can devise a subheadline for this article if it's called clay. Let's just change that to a lower font size and maybe let's say medium, which lets your creativity flourish. Next, I need two text boxes uh, that will fill up with paragraph text. So just drag out a box and you can type out whatever you want, but it's nice to have paragraph text that looks like it was actually a paragraph. It's actually just placeholder stuff that we're going to put in here. But designers call it Alorum ipsum, and uh, that's the first of the Latin words that start off the usual filler text. So let's jump on to back into our blog post and see that I've left a few links for you. You can generate classical lorem ipsum text, the whole Latin thing, or you can do one of the fun lorem ipsum alternatives. You can do a Google search for that, and you'll find things like cupcake ipsum, where you can generate I don't know, however many paragraphs you want, medium length or short length or long, and click Generate. It comes up with all sorts of dessert-themed text for you to import into any design just as to sit there and wait for the real text to go in, or just to practice with your layouting, or just to practice with developing layouts. So you can highlight the generated text, press Control c to copy it, or right click, press copy, and you can enter it into your Control v to paste. Text is usually between 9 and 11 point, uh, sorry, or 12 points, so we'll just go with 11. You can press Control all to make sure that all of the text gets selected at the same time in that text box, Control a 
And you'll notice that in the bottom right of this window, you see this little plus. Uh, that means there's text that is outside of the visible text box, which is fine. Most design software will let you flow from this, if you right click or do a command click or something like that, into a new text box as it appears. But because we're just using Photoshop, we kind of have to do our work around. So you can right click on this text box, this text layer up here, and say duplicate layer. Doesn't matter what the second one is called. Press OK. Use the move tool and drag it over directly over. And if you drag it over and drop it here, things are a little bit out of alignment. If you press Control Z and try it again, if you drag it over and hold down Shift as you drag it, you'll see that it's perfectly, even though I'm trying to move it up and down, it stays locked on that horizontal. And you want to have something locked on the horizontal. Uh, the formal term for that would be like the baseline grid. And uh, to distribute the text so it's not the same in both paragraphs, you can just delete some of this that you had from before and leave this stuff. Even though there's still text below, don't worry about it. So pause right now and try to get out that image, get it onto your 8.5 by 11 sheet of uh, your blank document. You need to have your subheadline, your headline, and two paragraphs of text. So if you need to go back and look at those tips, go back. Now this design is successful in that it has a bunch of white space up here, up here, around here, and around the margins. But it's not really intentional anyway. We have inconsistencies about where the text is, where these columns are placed, evenness of the margins, um, where this is on the grid, who knows, and uh, the reasoning behind why we've got this type the way it is, this blank space here. So we need to think with uh, maybe a bit more structure. And there are several things that can help us do that. One is uh, working with the rulers on, which you can view, or press shift Control r So make sure your rulers are on if you don't have them on. And you can also go to view and click on grid. This grid might look different for you. I've set it up so that it makes the grid occur at every quarter of an inch. But that can be adjusted in Edit and Preferences and Guides and Grid. If you made subdivisions of more than four, such as uh, eight, you'll see that double. And you'll get it at every eighth of an inch. For our sake, let's keep it at subdivisions of four. You can also drag out from the ruler things called guides. So click in this white space here and drag, and you'll be able to deposit a teal line wherever you'd like to have things become even with one another. So if I wanted to create a balanced relationship between this image and these paragraphs of text, I could move them over to that that same guideline and that would create kind of a, a natural harmony that they they feel organized now together because they're going along the same guideline. Since I have this grid visible it makes the guideline a little bit obsolete. I know that this can line up with that line and so if you want to get rid of these you can click and drag them and throw them off back towards the ruler and they will no longer be part of your document. If you aren't viewing the grid, it could be beneficial to have uh, a guideline still where let's say you wanted to have your title be on the same line as the top of that image and you wanted to have your subheadline be roughly consistent with the beginning of your headline, then you can place those guides and, and they'll, they'll be beneficial for you. Same thing if you wanted to have, if you want this guideline to determine where your sub headline should end, you can resize text so that, from a corner of course, so that it fits within that, that column structure that you've got down here. 
you can hide those guides by going to view and guides and they'll disappear and that's just to double check that you've got things lined up the way you want so this has a bit more order but I feel like it it's still imbalanced from one side to the other you can grab all elements of your image and move them over a little bit if you hold shift you'll get that locking horizontal kind of thing or if you like the right height but you want it to stay uh, but you want it to move over on the x-axis then you can click and drag but while holding shift so if you haven't yet stop the video and try to arrange your design elements so that they're somewhat related to each other they have a relationship maybe they're touching the same guideline maybe they're along the grid in the same row do that now so everyone has done these instructions so far uh, if you haven't made sure to have noticeable white space please do uh, if you're advanced you can try creating this particular hierarchy make the headline the most obvious then the image then subhead then paragraph one of the easiest ways to determine where somebody's gonna look on a layout is how big something is so you can reduce the size of your image and increase the size and space around your headline the hierarchy is almost this then this then this if you wanted to make this even clearer you can resize this to make it smaller and that would certainly get you from looking at clay looking at the image then looking at your subhead and then going down to the text below don't be scared about the amount of white space white space is there to bring uh, peace and comfort to whoever is viewing it so it's not a bad thing so have fun make different arrangements for where text can go where your title is going to be um, have fun with your design and uh, oops yeah sometimes if, if ever you're having trouble with resizing with the move tool your text boxes click once on the corner and then you can drag out so I don't I don't know why that is but it's a little bit of a glitch in in Photoshop when you're done you can save it into the correct spot say rename it first to your last name dot first name dash white space in this case you go to computer for students in yearbook in and then into the assignment 5 white space folder please also save as again just so that we can preview one another's files really quickly as a JPEG let's go to file save as again change the format down here to JPEG and you can leave the word copy in the file name as it automatically updates it so don't worry about your name just change the format to JPEG and it'll update press save quality 12 is great okay and that's it you've handed in your your file and we'll do a, a critique and a, a look at how you guys did and give you some feedback on that